Hello and welcome to Class Time Mathematics. As usual, you can follow along in real time on Television Jamaica's YouTube channel or One Spot Media. I am Nikisha Hardy. And I am Tyrone Brown. And today we'll be solving simultaneous equations graphically. If you have any questions during the course of the lesson or even after, send them to the Television Jamaica's Facebook page or Instagram at television underscore Jamaica or use the hashtag TVJ class time. Let's begin. All right, so today we'll be looking at graphical solution of simultaneous linear equations. Now the, just a second. All right, so the objectives for today are write linear equations in slope intercept form and solve a pair of simultaneous linear equations in two unknown graphically. Okay, so let us look at the situation here. So Nikisha, let's take a little trip together. Yes. Right? We're going on vacation. Imagine uh -uh. that we are going to be taking a taxi while we're on vacation. All right. And you know that the taxi service charges $200 to pick up our family. Mm -hmm. And from the hotel, another $15 per kilometer for the trip. So you're saying $200 for the taxi to come and pick us up? Yes. And then when it moves, start moving, we start paying $15 mm -hmm. per kilometer. Exactly. So, what are we getting at? We want to know what, how much money to spend because we have to be on budget. So we can't go over budget. So we need to know how much it would cost for a, maybe a short trip, maybe eight kilometers. Yes, and these are some of the real-time applications, real-world applications of math. Yes, specifically linear equation. Now, how could we represent this? How could we find out what mathematical method could we use? I'm thinking this would look awesome on a graph. On a graph? Yes. Oh, interesting. Well, what we need, what do we need? What are some of the things that we'll be need to create that graph? Mm, I'm seeing some of the information there, and I'm seeing $200 yes. as the fixed cost, because mm -hmm. it doesn't really matter whether or not how far the journey is. That yes. taxi driver is going to charge us $200 at least, and he's going to charge us an additional 15 dollars per kilometer so we need to take that into consideration as well so maybe we could set up an equation yes an equation to represent this so an equation i'm thinking would look so the y here would represent what the total cost that the taxi driver would the total char tax charge for the taxi service for the service yes, yes. and this 15 dollars i'm thinking would represent the cost per kilometer yes and this two hundred dollars here the fixed cost to pick us up from the hotel the fixed cost so that won't change no that will remain constant all right so and you mentioned a graph but before we get to the graph i'm thinking that we need some points and i like tables tables make everything so clear and you can pick up information definitely and i agree with you and there's something peculiar on this table. Yes. You're picking up that even though I'm traveling zero kilometers, yes. I'm still paying something to the taxi driver. Yes. So that would be this $200 here. Yes. Okay. And if I travel one kilometer, if we travel one kilometer together, I notice that $15 is added onto that $200. Yes. And add an additional $15 for, for one more kilometer. For one more kilometer. So each extra kilometer we go, based on the values that we're seeing in our table, we're noticing that that $15 keeps adding on to the cost per kilometer. So in this situation, I'm thinking we multiply 15 by whatever kilometer we would have traveled. So for example, we traveled six kilometers. So in order to know how much to pay the taxi driver. Yes, and that would be six times multiplied by 15, which would give us 90. Yes. Plus 200 would have been 290. All right, so know that, and notice over in the far column there, we have some pairs of coordinates. Yes, those ordered pairs would be 
what we would need to plot on our graph. And then we would, so we'll be able to see the information on the graph. Exactly. Let's see what the graph looks like using some of the points on our, or from our ordered pairs. Okay, so this point here would represent? That would be the fixed cost. The starting point. The starting, yes. Right, so at this point so we notice? He'll charge us that $200 even when we are just, we, even though we haven't moved off from the hotel as yet. Right. And so as we go along the journey, we notice that the cost is? Increasing. Increasing. And Good. we'll speak more about that later in terms of the amount by which it is increasing. Okay. So basically, we were looking at a linear equation in everyday life. And there are so many activities that we carry out in everyday life that requires us to use linear equation without us even knowing that we're using linear equations. Sometimes we're in math class and we're wondering, well, we're learning this. And you go out and use the skills and the knowledge that you have gained. We use it every and day. And we don't even realize yes, it. Th that is in fact true. So yeah. we'll explore a few more ed everyday scenarios mm -hmm. where we'll be using linear equations. All right, let's look at one here. Making predictions. So a situation like, you know, schools always having big sales to raise funds to do some activities. So sometimes we need to know how much... Um, so, for example, the key club going to do a bake sale, they need to know how much money they would make. So yes. they want to make some predictions to get the, um, the amount of money that they would need for the project. In terms of the profit, good. Profit, yes. So in this scenario, we're having a bake sale, as Nikisha said. Mm -hmm. We spent an initial $200, and then we are earning $150 per month from the sale of the items that we are making. So we can set up a linear equation to make prediction to represent this scenario here. And in the end, we could graph it. Yes, yes, we so could. Look at another situation. And that would be the equation that represents this scenario. Yes. So what about rates? Sometimes we have to make decisions based on the rates. For example, we may be offered uh, two different job Pay, pay scale. Yes, and yes. this is important yes, because and we, have, we to have to be able to know how to decide on which job would be best for us yes. in terms of the compensation. Yes, so we'd have to see. So here we have, uh, per, we are being offered $450 per week and another company offering $10 per hour and both of them are asking you to work for $40, for 40 hours per week. Which one? would be offering a better rate of pay. Mm -hmm. Right, so we could set up a linear equation as well. Yes. This would require about two. Yes. So that we can compare and contrast to make our decision. Definitely. Okay. So remember, linear equations every day. So what, we've been talking about linear equations. What are linear equations? Linear equations are equations of the first order. What do you mean by first order? Basically, that means that when we talk about order and math, we, we normally talk about the powers or the index. Okay, okay. Yes. So when we're talking about the first order, it means that we're talking about a power or index of one. All right. So these equations will have a power or index of one. So the terms in the equation would have power or index of one. And these equations are defined for lines, as the name suggests, linear in the coordinate system. And these are some examples. Mm. So we have y equal 2x plus 1, 5x equal 6 plus 3y. And y divided by 2 is equal to 3 minus x. And we notice that as it says, they are all of the first order. None of the terms are raised to any power greater than 1. Yes. And I also notice that they look slightly different. Each of them is represented in a different way. Yes, I'm seeing some with the, especially when it comes on to the coefficient of the y term, because yes. that's going to be important. Yes. Some one, the first one has a coefficient of one. The y term, yes. Yes. The second equation has a coefficient of three. The y term, yes. And the y term for the coefficient, y term the coefficient. has a coefficient of a half. One half, good. Yes. So we notice that the linear equations comes in different forms. Yes. Right? 
So um, we're going to be focusing on one form, but even though we might be given in one form, we can change it. We can change it to our next. To another form. Some of the things that we would have learned in algebra. All right. And we'll be looking at some of those. And one of the specific forms we're going to be focusing on today is the slope-intercept form. That is correct. Now, this should look familiar for this linear equation to you guys in slope, looking at slope-intercept form. The slope-intercept form um, is y equal mx plus b, where m is the slope or gradient and or the rate b, of change. And b is the y-intercept. Yes, that definitely looks familiar. Right, and notice when we talk about y-intercept, we're talking about the point on the y-axis that the graph cuts it or intersects with the y-axis. And it's a specific point that would be our y-intercept. Tell me more about the b. The b, that would be the gradient. And no, the we, b, the constant. On oh, the b. Yes. Uh, we already spoke about that. That's the y-intercept, right? Right. So that means what? So at that point in time, it is, it's the point at which, it's a fixed point. Mm -hmm. So no on change. On the graph, yes. All right. So that would be similar to the fixed cost that we spoke about similar earlier. Similar to the $200 cost yes. that the taxi man would charge us, whether or not we move yes. or go any, how far we go. go. So let us look at an example and see if we can pick out the slope and the y-intercept. And the, and the m is also important to, to mm -hmm. you know, Nikisha, because mm -hmm. we already spoke about a situation similar to that. Yes. In terms of the rate of change. Right. Which was the, the rate $15. At which it was increasing. The $15. The, so that would have been our gradient. Yes. So, so in this equation, y equal 2x plus 1. Can you identify the slope or the rate of change? Hmm. I am seeing the slope or rate of change would be 2 in this situation. And what would be your y intercept? And the y intercept would be 1. Go correct. That would be, the, that would mean the graph would cut the y-axis mm. at one. So that would be our y-intercept, b equal one. So basically, in some, um, let's look at the different parts. We were just looking at that. So this is what it would look like on a graph. For example, in this case, our gradient or rate of change in this case is two thirds. Two is. Two, sorry, three halves. Three halves. Three yes. halves. And notice that we have this right triangle formed here, Tyrone. Oh, that looks like what we would normally do when we are finding the gradient yes. on the graph paper. Yes. So the, the three would represent? The three would represent the vertical movement. Yes. And the two? Or some people call that the rise. The rise, yes. And then the two would be the horizontal movement, which would be the run. The run. All right, good. So let's continue. All right, it's lunchtime and we're having patty and orange juice today. Wow. <laughs> it's been a while. <laughs> We've been in quarantine for so long. We haven't been to school. And it's so good to be back to buy patty and orange juice. So tasty. And I, and I love patty, especially the tasty patty. Really? Yes. Well, it don't matter whichever one to me. I just eat any patty as long as... So anyway... You notice how the price was so expensive? Yes, this is not the price I normally pay for patty. Yeah, patty and juice is like said everything just skyrocket. Let, look at what um so you you got one two patties and one box of orange juice for five hundred and forty dollars. And you paid for one patty and a box of orange juice for three hundred and twenty dollars. Yes, it's so expensive these days, but. I don't even know, you see, because I was so hungry, I didn't even check to real to see yeah, how much one each of the item costs. Okay. I just give the lady my Anything money. Anything them want, charge me, they're just hungry, as you said. Yes, <laughs> but now that I'm thinking about it and looking at what I have left, we need to figure out how much this costs so we know how much to budget for tomorrow. But I think between the both of us, we can figure that out. Yes. Um, based on what we have been doing before, you think we could set up some... Equation to sort this yes, out? Yes, this looks like some equations. Yes. So. All right. So, first of all, let us establish some points, some things here. So, we're going to let X be the cost of one party. Okay, sounds good. Mm -hmm. And Y be the cost of one orange, box of orange juice. Okay. Now, with that said, let us see what the equation would look like for two parties and an orange juice. 
And that would be equal to five hundred and forty dollars. Then yes, that would be your purchase. That is what I bought two, two patties and a box of orange juice. So that's two x plus y and equal. And I paid five forty for five forty. And you bought one patty mm -hmm. and a box of orange juice, and you paid two hundred and thirty dollars. So that's x plus y equal three hundred. 20. And we're emphasizing that X and Y in, these, in this situation has to do with the cost of each. Cost item. of each item. Yes. So one patty cost X mm -hmm. is represented by X and one box of orange juice, the cost of it is represented by Y. Awesome. Okay. So let's see. Notice the two equations. First, we had 2x plus y equal 540. Now I'm seeing y equal 540 minus subtract 2x. What happened here? Remember, we were talking earlier about the slope-intercept format? Yes. Oh, and yes. we wanted y equal to something? Yes. So we are re-expressing in this situation using what we would have learned in algebra class Specifically, transposition. Transposition. Ah, yes. yes. Transposing. Transposing. So, what operations did we do to get um, this two x from the left side over to the right side? I'm thinking because it is a plus two x. Yes. I would need to take two x from both sides. And that would so give subtraction. Us. Would All be right. The operation. Okay. And here we add x plus y. This is my purchase equal three hundred twenty. It's not in the slope intercept form y equal mx plus b. Yes. So I would therefore need to do transposition. Transposing again. Okay. So we can take we can subtract x from both sides. Yes. And it now becomes y equal 320 minus x. Good. So now we have these two equations to work with. Both of them saying y equal to terms. All right, so looking at this, can this tell me the cost for each item, seeing that I have two unknowns here? Mm, two. That's not normally how we normally solve equations. We usually only have one unknown. Yes. So how can we um, sort this out? Let me think about it a little bit. Oh, yes. Remember in, in math class when we were doing algebra again, mm -hmm. We discussed simultaneous equations. Oh, yes. When we had two unknowns for two equations. Oh, yes, right. So we have two unknowns, simultaneous equations. Yes, mm -hmm. that would be quite useful for us now to find out the cost for each item. All right. So what's the first thing we want to do to solve here? I'm thinking a table would be useful so that we could maybe generate some values. Okay, and as we had discussed in terms of simultaneous equation, we know that there are different ways we can actually solve simultaneous equations. Yes. So we have... Oh yeah, I remember the elimination method. Yes, the substitution method. Yes, and um, as we're going to be... And the matrix method. Yes, and we are going to be looking at the graphical method today. Oh, okay. And I, I personally love graphs, so yes. I'm, okay. I'm so excited. All right, but let, don't, don't get too excited, Taron. Just let's get back to this and take it one step at a time. So now we are looking for some y values because we want to plot, plot our graph. So x values, we have 0. When x is 0... We notice that if we substitute zero in the equation, y equal 540, subtract 2x, it would mean 540 minus 2 times zero, which would be and 540. I'm, I'm realizing that you're substituting that zero yes. into the equation. Wherever x is. Where x is to, to do the solution. Yes. And so we'd have 540 for a y value there. Well, that, makes, that makes sense. But we are just playing around it at this point, you know, because we're not sure what, what the cost of no, the patty no. and the box of juice is. No. So we are just finding some possible costs. Yes. And we are looking at the case when the cost of one patty is zero. Yes. Although we know it was zero. zero. No. But if it was zero... That means you would pay... The 540 just for the orange juice. That means you paid 540 just for the orange juice. And we know they're not giving out no free patty here. <laughs> yeah. So say for example, if, if say for instance the patty cost $100, mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. It would mean that substituting that 100 for x in 540 subtract 2x, it would be 540 subtract 200 because yes. 2 times 100. And therefore, a box of orange juice would cost $340. If it were being sold for a, a party I, for $100. Yes. All right. Uh, what if it were sold for $200? That would be 540 minus 2 times 200. Good. Or 540 minus 400, and that would be $140 for one box of orange juice. Okay. All right, so this is your purchase. Let us see what, if it, what it would look like for my equation, my purchasing situation, where I bought one patty and, and one, one box of orange juice. Yes. Yeah. Using the same values that you used, notice the difference in the cost. So when, my, when, your, when your patty was for um, zero, you didn't pay, mm -hmm. your orange juice cost for 540 but mine is 320. That, that looks a little bit weird. Well, remember you bought two patties, I only bought one. Oh, yes, 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 yes. yes. And um, so when it is the cost for the patty is $100, supposing it mm -hmm. is $100, and we substitute that value for X in the equation, we notice that the orange juice, after subtracting 100 from 320, cost 220. would be 220. And if we substitute 200 for X in the equation, the Subtracting that from 300, it would be 120. But wait, Nikisha, mm -hmm. didn't we buy the patty and the orange juice from the same place? Yes. So shouldn't we be paying the same amount of money for the orange juice and the patty? Definitely. Most definitely. But I'm not seeing where any of these values found for, for, for the orange juice match the values that you could possibly have paid for your orange juice. I understand. But remember, we're not yet finished with this. Let's take it, the experiment a little further. Okay. Remember, you said you like graphs? Oh, yes, So let's definitely. get into that exciting <laughs> part. So looking at these two equations graphically, this first one represents your purchase. Yes. And this other graph represents my purchase. Okay, so I am seeing the two graphs. And make sure, we make sure students that you go, before we go any further, we'll come back to this. It's time for the break. Don't go too far because we have a lot more to get into after this.
Welcome back to class time. This is math and we have been looking into solving simultaneous equations graphically. Let's pick up from where we left off. Yes. So Nikisha, I realized when we were discussing earlier, we were talking about the patty and the one box of orange juice. Yes. The boxes of orange juice that we were purchasing from mm. the the canteen. The canteen. Yes. We had graphed those two scenarios on the on this. Um, Cartesian plane. Yes. And we had the first being a representation of what I purchased. Which, which is, is a line y equal 540 minus 2x. And the, the second would be the line representing your purchase, yes. which would be y equal 320 minus x. And it's very important to label our lines as we're working so that we can keep track of what we're doing. But Nikisha, yes. as we were discussing before, yes. if we both purchased it from the same place, we would have needed to pay the same amount for one box of orange juice and one patty. Yes, it would mean that. So there must be at some point in time, based on our analysis, that yes. these two figures are going to be the same. Most definitely. And I'm thinking that if at that point, both of them should be the same, it would mean that there'd be some intersecting taking place. Yes. Be think about sex. Remember, they share the things in common. Okay. So there should, when I look at the two graphs here, I see that the two graphs intersect. intersect at this point. Ah. Ah. So that <laughs> point would be the cost of the one party and one yes. orange juice. So right here is a point of intersection marked in the red. So red. I'm seeing 220 for the X value, which was the cost of the patty, mm. one patty, and 100 for the Y value, the cost of an orange juice. Yes. And you know what else I'm picking up from the graph? I'm picking up the Y intercepts. Oh yes, I didn't even realize that they were there. Yes, the yes. Y intercepts are here. And these are the constants. Those were the constants. Yes. So notice here on my graph, 320 was my constant, my y-intercept. And here on your graph, 540 was your y-intercept. Yes, you are indeed correct. Yes. So this intersection here of these two graphs would provide a solution. L l let's do a quick check. You bought one patty yes. and a box of orange juice. Yes. So, so 220. Right, so if we were to substitute those values, values in my equation. You would get back the 320 for I your purchase. Get, yes, I should. And I bought two patties and a box of orange juice. So, so that if you would substitute be, those values in your equation, you should get 540. Oh, okay. All right. So, we have been talking about simultaneous equations. And you notice, Tyrone, that these are what? Two or more? They are two or, two or more linear equations with at least two unknown variables. Yeah, that could be solved at the same time. And they can be solved at the same time. Right, because yes. good. And what else we know about simultaneous equations? And we had mentioned this before. Mm -hmm. We could solve it using a graphical method, yes. as we would have just looked at a while ago. Uh -huh. We could use elimination, substitution, or even matrices. Awesome. So simultaneous solving of simultaneous is very versatile. We have a lot of variety to choose from, however way we want to solve them. Yes. All right, so that's the focus of our lesson today, solving simultaneous equations graphically. So let's get into that. Now, with simultaneous equations, there are different types of solutions. We have unique solutions. There are infinitely many solutions. Or no solution. Wow. No. What we mean by unique solution and infinitely many solution or no solution? So, in this graph, we have a unique solution because it has 
only one point of intersection. Just like the graph that we just did with yes. the party and the orange juice. Yes, so that situation has, a, has one unique solution. Okay, so just one point. All right, so we talk about the unique solution. Let's look at infinitely many solutions. Infinitely mean what, Tyrone? Many, multiple, <laughs> a lot. <laughs> that going in. Ooh, this one looks different. I just see it's two equations, right? Remember, it's two equations. Yes, two lines. But they seem to be overlapping. Right, they're like overlapping on each it's, other. Yes. So the graph seems to be coincidental, right? Yes. So they are lining up. All the points are collinear. They're lining up. All the points along like, each of these graphs. So it's just thinking of two lines coming together and lying on top of each but, other. But Nikisha, if the two lines, all the points on the two lines are the same. Yes. Aren't they basically the same line? Exactly. Exactly. Okay, so these two equations actually are different ways of expressing the same equation. Yes. So it therefore means that, as we said, infinitely many solutions. And the third one we mentioned was inconsistent equation where there is what? There is no point of intersection. No point of intersection. And two lines come to mind where they never intersect, they never meet. Parallel lines. Parallel lines. Yes, So once they get in parallel lines, it means there is no solution. Okay, so this is what you were just saying. Exactly one solution, the two lines have one point of intersection. Infinitely many solutions. The lines are completely identical. Yes, and no solution. They are parallel and have no point of intersection. Great. All right, so let's look at an example. So we can write equations of the line. So say if we have this equation of a line, 2x plus 3y equals 7 in the format y equal mx plus C or B, which is and a, the slope intercept format slope. we spoke about earlier. And, and that has some merit because it's easier for us to pick up certain key things from the slope intercept format. Right. The gradient and the y intercept and all of these things that makes it easy for us to sketch our graphs. To sketch our graphs. Very good. So basically, we need about three points to sketch our graph, a yes. line graph. Yeah, good. So by transposing for y. And we did some of that. So looking at 2x plus 3y equals 7, doing some inverse operations on both sides, trying to isolate y. Yes, if I am trying to transpose 4y, it means that I'm going to have to find a, to, a way to get the 2x on the other side of the equation. Okay. So I could do that by subtracting 2x from both sides as done in this situation. And when we do that, it follows that we would have 3y is equal to 7 subtract 2x. But is y yet by itself? No. And furthermore, I notice that the, you have changed around the, the order of the terms. And, and that's perfectly OK, because they are basically representing the same thing as we did before. Mm -hmm. The 7 is still positive, and yeah. the 2 is, 2x is still negative. We just do that so it looks like the yes. it's in the y intercept, the slope intercept form. Yes. Okay, awesome. So we have three y. Um, so we have not yet isolated y. So what's the next step? I'm thinking three y is three multiplied by y. Yes. So we would have to do the inverse operation, which would be division. So we would therefore divide both sides of the equation by three, three and that would then isolate y. So we'd have y equal. Negative 2x. Plus 7, all divided by 3. All right, so we have transposed this linear equation to the slope intercept form. So using that equation, again, we can find values and plot graphs. So substituting for x, negative 3 in the equation, we see that would be 2, negative 2, multiplied by negative 3, plus 7, all divided by 3. And that would give us... 6 plus 7 all divided by 3, mm -hmm. and that would be 13 thirds. 13 thirds for y. So if I substitute 0 for x in the equation, that would be negative 2 multiplied by 0 plus 7 all divided by 3. And that would be just 0 plus 7 divided by 3, or 7 thirds. 
for y. So if I substitute positive 3 in the equation, that, that would be negative 2 multiplied by 3 plus 7, all divided by 3. That would be negative 7 plus... Negative 6. Negative 6 plus 7, mm -hmm. all divided by 3. Yes. And that would be one-third. One-third. Now, and notice, does it matter which values we use for x? Where, how we start? We decide what do I use to decide which numbers to use for x values to substitute. Does it matter? It, most times it really doesn't matter because mm -hmm. what we are trying to do is just to get a line. Yes. And we just need the, 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 y, the, the ordered pair for x and y. Yes. And once we have a number of them, we have enough points to sketch our line. Okay. To plot our, our line. Okay. Um, so let's see. So now we have x and y values. So we can look at the graph of that equation. Wow. So we're just using three points. Yes, so we used when x is negative 3, we use when x is 0. Yes. And when x is... So positive 3. Positive 3. Yes. Okay, so that's not hard. So and remember to label our lines, label your graph with the equations. Okay, so now we have a pair of simultaneous equations and we're going to solve this graphically. So we have 3x minus 2y equal 12. But Nikisha, this and almost looks like a CSA question I did when I was practicing math the other day for the it, exam. It does? Yes, yes it well, does. Well, <laughs> it's not strange because you know CSA. <laughs> so let us see if what you did. Let's see if we can, we can solve this question using the graphical method that we would have learned today. Uh-huh. And see how it works out, and what it looks like. And see how it works out. Okay. So... Firstly, we're going to start off by making y the subject of the equation. Because it wasn't, right? We're going to make y the subject of these two equations. Let's so focusing on equation 1. Okay. So that is what we have for equation 1. 3x minus 2y is equal to 12. And remember, we want to isolate y, so we're going to do the inverse operation for 3x, and we're going to subtract 3x from both sides of the equation, leaving negative 2y equal 12 subtract 3x. And then, because as Nikisha said, we are trying to get y isolated, we would divide both sides by negative. But before we do that, we just want to fix it up so it look in the slope intercept form. Yes, we, yes, we can do that as well. Move around the terms. And then we can divide by negative 2. Both sides of the equation. So it therefore means y would be equal to negative, negative 3x, 3x plus, plus 12. 12 all divided by negative 2. And we can tidy this some more. Yes. And we would do that by multiplying the numerator and denominator by negative, negative 1. Two. Negative 1, yes. And therefore, we now have the final equation, y equal 3x minus subtract 12, sorry, all divided by 2. Let us turn to equation 2. This one looks a little bit easier. Yes. So we have starting off 2x plus y equal 1. We can transpose by subtracting 2x from both sides. Okay. And we are left with y is equal to 1 minus 2x. 1 subtract 2x. Okay. So um, I notice that my c, so we can therefore tidy this up a little bit better, moving around the terms. So we would have, so, okay, all right, we didn't need to move that. So let's find some values for y, starting with the first equation that we got. Substituting negative 5 for x in the equation 3x, subtract 12 all divided by 2 would be 3 multiplied by negative 5, subtract 12 all divided by 2. And that would be negative 27 divided by 2, which is negative 13.5. For a y value. For a y value. And for our x value, substituting 0 in the same equation we would have negative 3 multiplied by 0 for x, subtract 12, all divided by 2. And that would be 0, subtract 12, all divided by 2. Right. Which is the same as negative 12 divided by 2, or just negative 6. And if we were to substitute positive 5 for x, in the equation it would be 3 multiplied by 5, 
subtract 12, all divided by 2. And that would be 15, subtract 12, all divided by 2. Okay. And that would give us? 3 halves. 3 halves. Or 1.5. All right. So now we have some x values and some y values. So we can plot, plot a, a graph for this one. But before we do so, let's check out the other equation. All right. So if we have x values negative 5, substituting in this equation y equal 1 subtract 2x, it would be 1 subtract 2, neg subtract 2 times negative 5. Go ahead. And that would be 1 plus 10, which is just 11. And if we should substitute 0 for x in the equation, it would be 1 subtract 2 times 0. And that would be 1 subtract 0, mm -hmm. which is just 1. All right. And if we were to substitute 5 in the equation, it would be 1 subtract 2 times 5. That would be 1 subtract 10, mm -hmm. which is negative 9. Awesome. So now we have points for our two equations. Yes, we have the x values and the y values for both equations. For both equations. So let's graph them and see if they intersect. Whoa. And we where... hope it does. <laughs> <laughs> yes. All right. And they do intersect at this point. At this point. Let's, yes. let's see if, if the students at home can pick up what the, what the value of this point is. Maybe. I'm not sure if they're able to see it. <laughs> All right. So based on our reading of x values first and our y value following, we would get? The x value to be 2. Mm-hmm and the y value to be negative 3. Awesome. So we have a point of intersection, and this is called, it's one intersection, one point. One it's our unique solution. Unique solution. Awesome, awesome. Let's look at another example. And this time, a CSEC question. Well, you said that one was CSEC too. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, this is from May 2015. Question. Oh, some lovely mangoes and Whoa. pears. Wow, I can't love those. Well, I like the mangoes more than the pears. <laughs> I like both of them. I just love fruits. They're just so juicy okay. and delicious. All right, so let's hear the situation that was presented about mangoes and pears. Four mangoes and two pears cost $24, while two mangoes and three pears cost $16. Okay, price mm. not bad. So... We can, therefore, means that we can set up simultaneous equations because we have two situations here. We have here. two situations. So we need two equations. So let's assign some, oh, sorry, the other instructions. They're before asking we get... us to write a pair of simultaneous equations in X and Y to represent the information. And? And we're supposed to state clearly what X and Y would represent awesome. in the situation. Awesome. Finally, we're going to be graphing them. Okay. All right, so, first of all, let X, we're going to say that, let X be the cost of one mango and Y be the cost of one pair. Okay. All right. So, looking at the equation, so it's four mangoes and two pairs for $24, so 4X plus so, 2Y. Okay. Equal the X being one, the cost of one mango. Mm -hmm. So that 24 is a total cost for the four mangoes and, and the, the two, two pairs. pairs. Okay. Good, good. And for the next one, it would be 2X plus 3Y is equal to 16. To $16. So to, right. So now we have two linear equations. So first thing, we want to make Y the subject. So let's isolate Y by using inverse operations. Okay. We can go ahead and we can subtract... 4x on both sides, and that will result in 2y is equal to 24 minus 4x. So 24 subtract 4x. And we can go ahead to divide both sides by 2. Awesome. And that would have y equal 12 subtract 2x. Okay. Let's look at the second equation. So 2x plus 3y equals 16. Let's isolate y. And again, we would need to find a way to get rid of the 2x. So we subtract 2x from both sides. Inverse of adding, yes? In, the inverse of the addition. And that would leave? 3x is equal to? Sorry, 3y. 3y, sorry. 3y is equal to 16 subtract 2x. Good. 
And we just move them around just so that we have them in a good format. Yes. The, y, the slope intercept format. And then we would still need to do something because we have a three for the coefficient. Of y. Of y. And we want that to be one. So it therefore means that we would just divide, divide both by sides three. by three. As we're, we're multiplying y by three. And that would equal to? Y is equal to negative 2x plus 16 all divided by 3. Awesome. So now we have our two equations where Y is a subject. So let's create some tables of values for both of them. So in this table, substituting these values for X, when X is 0, we note that Y is 12. When X is 2, Y is 8. When X is 4, Y is also 4. And when X is 6, we find that Y was 0. So these are the points that were generated for this equation. For the first equation. For the other equation. For the other equation, we're doing the similar substitution. substitution. Yes. And we substitute 0 into the equation, and we get... Five and one, five and one third. third. And then when we use two for x. But Nikisha, quickly, how they, did they get the five and one third? All right. So substituting zero, so zero, negative two times zero is zero. Zero. Plus 16. So it will be 16 divided so by. So with 16 thirds. And when you simplify that, it would be. Five and three one. into that goes five holes and one remainder. So awesome. it's five and one third. So we have a mixed number there. Yes. So when x is two, y is four. And when x is four, y is two, two and, and two thirds. And following down in the same order. So, okay, we're winding down. Let's take our final break. And when we come back, we'll wrap things up. Welcome back. Thanks for sticking with us. Let's continue. 
Okay, so Nikisha, before the break, we were exploring the table of values yes. to get our, our ordered pairs, our points to plot on the graph. All right. So let's continue. Okay, so now that we have our points, let's see what our graph looks like. So note this is the first equation, and we are labeling them. And then notice the point of intersection. Yes. So you can see here that the point of intersection is 5, 2. Mm -hmm. 5 being the, the value for the x. Which was the mango. Which cost was of the one, cost of one, one mango. And y being the cost of... The 2 being the value of the y, which was the cost, cost of, of the one, pair. One pair. One yes. pair. Yes. So here we have a unique solution. So we have solved... That pair of simultaneous equation, graphically. Yes, yes, we did. <laughs> awesome. All right, so now that we have acquired that skill, let's see if we can do one last one. Definitely. So now we have these two, and the first step, remember, is to make wider. Wider the subject. Make wider the subject. Let's see if they... So let's do that quickly. Let's do that quickly. So basically, what we want to do is to subtract 2x from both sides. So subtracting 2x from both sides, we're and left we with get y, y is equal, equal three. to 3 minus 2x. All right. Awesome. So let's look at this. And we just switch that around to put it in a slope-intercept form. And the second equation, subtracting 5x from both sides of the equation, we're left with negative 2y equal 12, subtract 5x. And we switch the terms around, terms around to get that in right. a better format, and then we are going to be dividing both sides by... We're going, to be, be, be that, we are going to be dividing both sides by negative 2. Awesome. To get the value of... Y. Y to be isolated. So now we have generated the two equations in the format Y Judge, and then equal mx plus b. But just as before, you realize that we had a negative number on oh, the yes. denominator. Negative number in the denominator. And we as mathematicians, we don't like to have negative numbers no. on, our, on our denominator. So to fix that? So we, to fix that, we'll multiply both numerator and denominator by a negative one. And that will give us positive values in our denominator. Awesome. All right, so let's use the tables to generate values for each, for some points. So we can plot. So for the first equation, when we use negative 5 as our x value, we get negative 2 multiplied by negative 5 plus 3. That's 10 plus 3, and that would be 13. When we use 0 for our x value in our equation, we get negative 2 multiplied by 0 plus 3. And that would be 0 plus 3, which would be 3. And when we substitute positive 5, it would be negative 2 multiplied by 5 plus 3, and that would give us? Negative 10 plus 3, and that would be negative 7. All right, so that's the first equation. Let's look at the second one. Now, if I were to use 4x... We're using the same values, so negative, negative 5. 5. So it would be negative, sorry, 5 times negative 5 minus 12, all divided by 2. We give a y value of negative 37 divided by 2, which is the same as negative 18.5. Using 0, substituted into the equation, gives us 5 times 0 minus 12, all divided by 2. And that would be 0 subtract 12, all divided by 2, which would give us negative 6. When we use positive 5 for x value, that would be 5 multiplied by 5 minus 12, all divided by 3. That would be 13, sorry. Yes, 13 divided by, by 2. 2. 6.5. So now we have our two values, points, set of points, so that we can use to plot our graph. And, and when we plot our points, we are getting one unique solution again. One unique solution. Awesome. And let's see what the values of that would be. So for the... Point Inter of intersection. For the point of intersection, we're getting x to have a value of 2 mm -hmm. and y having a value of negative 1. Negative 1. So basically, when the, we can say the solution is for simultaneous equation graphically is where the graph intersect each other. The point 
where the graph intersect each other. All right. So let us summarize what we have looked away. What we have looked at today. Sorry about that. So basically we started off by making y the subject. Then we we substitute key values of x into the equations to get our points that we're going to plot on the graph. Yes. Then we, that would give us for the first line. Mm -hmm. And we would need to repeat those steps to get the graph of the second line. And then we identify the point of intersection if there is a point of intersection. All right. So also, we notice that the graph of every linear equation in two variables is a straight line. Additionally, y is equal to mx plus b. y equal mx plus b is a slope, slope intercept, intercept form, form. Yes. where m is the slope of the line and b is the y intercept. That's where the y axis is cut, crossed by the graph. And we know that there were three different types of solutions that could be arrived at using simul solving simultaneous graphically. We can have one unique solution when it intersects at one point. We can have no solution when the lines are parallel. And we can have infinitely many solutions when the lines overlap. Okay. That's all for today on solving simultaneous equations graphically. You can catch a repeat of today's lesson on JNN at 5 p.m. or on video on demand on One Spot Media. And don't forget the School Time channel, 24-hour learning on One Spot Media. We return tomorrow with math, but we shift gears to solving linear inequalities. Until then, wash your hands regularly, sanitize often, and, and please, please wear, wear your, your mask. mask. Bye. Bye. Hi there, I'm Simon Preston from TVJ. Thank you very much for watching our YouTube channel. To see our latest videos and also to see live events, click here. To see our full videos on onespotmedia.com, click here. Thank you very much for watching.